Hello, and welcome to the third episode of ADHD for Grownups. Today, we're going to be talking about ADHD medications, specifically stimulants. Part two will include non-stimulants. There are two types of ADHD medication, stimulants and non-stimulants. Stimulants are going to stimulate the central nervous system, or the CNS. Non-stimulants, sure you guessed it, do not stimulate the central nervous system. What is the central nervous system? It's basically just your brain and spinal cord, and as you know, it controls lots of things, but importantly, having to do with ADHD, it controls your memory, your movement, speech, and spatial awareness. As I mentioned today, we're just going to talk about stimulants. The next video is going to be about non-stimulants, but here are the stimulants we're gonna talk about today. Amphetamines and dextroamphetamines, an example of that would be Adderall, Lisdexamphetamine, Vyvanse, Methylphenidate, examples are Concerta and Ritalin, and Dexmethylphenidate. An example of that would be Focalin, Focalin, I don't take this one, so I, this is actually the first time I heard of it, so I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I'm gonna guess Focalin. Sorry, I said it weird the first time. <laughs> The first stimulant we're going to talk about is Adderall. Uh, the generic name or the chemical name is going to be amphetamine, dextroamphetamine, and up in the right hand corner here is the chemical structure of amphetamine, dextroamphetamine. So there are two types of Adderall. We have extended release, XR, and immediate release, IR. Immediate release can also just be called Adderall, but extended release, you always have to put that XR in there to really specify which Adderall you're talking about. So extended release kicks in within 30 to 90 minutes, depending on your stomach contents. Um, so if you just ate a big meal, it's gonna take a little closer to 90 minutes for that to kick in, and it's not going to be as effective. Uh, but compared to if you just woke up and you haven't eaten breakfast yet and you take it, it's gonna kick in closer to 30 minutes. Some people even say that it kicks in 10 to 15 minutes for them. It really depends on the person and your metabolism. This lasts about seven to 12 hours. Of course, again, this depends on how much you've eaten that day, how much you ate right before you took it, and your tolerance level. That's why there are different doses. Sometimes if you become tolerant to Adderall, you have to increase your dose or even switch medication. And like I mentioned, there are different doses. Doctors usually like to start you out on five or 10 milligrams, and then they up it from there, and it goes all the way up to 30 milligrams. Immediate release. These kick in within five to 20 minutes. Uh, this isn't as dependent on your stomach contents as the XR is, but uh, it, again, if you did eat a huge meal, that will affect it a little bit. Um, it lasts only about three to four hours, depending on your tolerance. And the dosages that the immediate release comes in are five, 10, and 20 milligrams. I want to point out a lot of people that are against the use of Adderall, um, they like to point out that it sounds a lot like methamphetamine, which is the main ingredient for meth, you know, the drug that people do, the illegal drug. Um, but it's not to be confused with that. Amphetamine and dextroamphetamine are not the same thing as methamphetamine. A little more on Adderall, we're gonna talk about the mechanism of action really quick and the effects it has on the body. So what it's going to do is increase the production of and inhibit the reuptake of these three molecules or neurotransmitters. So reuptake, normally if your presynaptic neuron, if you haven't watched the other video, I'd highly recommend going back to check it out. It's five minutes, it kind of explains this part. The presynaptic neuron is going to send out these molecules and if the postsynaptic neuron doesn't take it within a certain amount of time, the brain's like, okay, well, if you're not gonna use it, then I'll just take that back. Adderall prevents that from happening. So it kind of ensures that these molecules are going to get taken up by that postsynaptic neuron at some point. And while it's preventing the reuptake, it's also increasing the production of dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine. So you're gonna have more dopamine, serotonin, and norepinephrine and your brain isn't going to try to take it back, so you're just gonna be using that more and there's going to be more available for you to use. So effects that Adderall can have on the body. There are some good and there are some bad, and I want to emphasize that not everyone experiences all of the good things and not everyone experiences all of the bad things. 
I have personally tried Adderall and Vyvanse, so I can speak from personal experience on those when we get to it, but I want to emphasize, please remember that this does not apply to everybody. So positive effects that Adderall has, it's going to improve your attention span. You're gonna have better focus and concentration. Uh, I personally have more energy. I yawn a lot when I haven't taken my Adderall, and then once it kicks in, I feel more awake and alert. Um, it also is going to control impulse control. You're not going to be as fidgety. Uh, it gives me a sense of clarity, like the cloud and the fog has been lifted, and it's amazing. Um, I feel more motivated when I take it, and I'm a little more motivated to organize things. I'm more organized. I can prioritize things. I can clean up easily and see things that need to be cleaned up, stuff like that. Uh, negative effects that it can, can have on the body. Um, insomnia, I've experienced this if I don't eat enough the same day that I take Adderall. There's also the risk of having a reduced appetite. This definitely happens to me. Anxiety, that doesn't happen to me. Increased heart rate sometimes happens to me. Dry mouth, definitely. I've had to pause this video a few times because I took one this morning and my mouth is really dry right now and I keep having to drink water. And then of course there's withdrawal. Some people experience withdrawal symptoms when they haven't taken their um, Adderall. That was supposed to be the anxiety little thingy. <laughs> Vyvanse is another stimulant. Its generic or chemical name is lisdexamphetamine. And here is the chemical structure of Vyvanse. It's a little longer than the, uh, than the amphetamine structure. Vyvanse can be taken in a few ways. You can mix it in a drink or like um, yogurt. There are chewable tablets or there are swallowable pills. Vyvanse is also long acting like Adderall, and it comes in these doses, and it's also used to treat eating disorders. So now we're going to talk about the mechanism of action for Vyvanse and the effects that it could have on the body. So first I want to clarify that um, Lizdex amphetamine is actually a prodrug of dextroamphetamine. Now, if you remember, dextroamphetamine is what Adderall is made from. And prodrug just means that this molecule, lisdexamphetamine, Vyvanse, is inactive until it's metabolized by the liver. So the liver is going to take in that lisdexamphetamine and then it's going to spit out dextroamphetamine, which can then be used by the brain. So I made up a little schematic here. So here is a Vyvanse pill, which contains this Lizdex amphetamine, that is going to you swallow it, and it's going to take about an hour or maybe two hours to get to your liver. Once it gets in your liver, liver is going to metabolize it, chew on it for a bit, and then it's going to spit out dextroamphetamine. This is the chemical that was on the same page as the Adderall page. And then that dextroamphetamine is going to make its way to your brain and increase the production of dopamine and norepinephrine and inhibit their reuptake. It doesn't have the increased production or uh, reuptake inhibition for serotonin like Adderall does, but it does have it for the other two. Effects on the body, they're going to be about the same as Adderall. Uh, personally for me, Vyvanse did not work. Um, I took 40 milligrams of Vyvanse and it it wasn't working out for me, but I have heard really great things about it from other people that it does work for. It really just depends on the person. So um, trying out different drugs, if one doesn't work, don't give up. Some Something will work for you eventually, hopefully. Um, a pro to taking Vyvanse instead of Adderall is that it's smoother than Adderall. Because you have to go through all of this, it's not going to kick in all at once super strong. It's gonna be kind of more of a gradual kick in. However, the con to it is that there's no generic version. Every other medication that I'm going to discuss has a generic version, so it's not going to be called Adderall. It's going to be called dextroamphetamine, amphetamine salts, um, and usually the generics are cheaper. However, Vyvanse does not have a generic version, and it can be very, very expensive. If you have to go online and get a coupon, and even if you do have the coupon, sometimes your insurance won't cover it. And the first time I tried to get Vyvanse with different insurance, they told me it was going to be like $340 for 30 pills. So it can be very expensive if you don't have the right insurance and the coupon. 
Another stimulant is going to be methylphenidate. Um, there are two methylphenidates, Ritalin and Concerto. We're going to talk about Ritalin first. Here is the chemical structure of methylphenidate. There are three types of Ritalin. There's the immediate release, and that's just called Ritalin. The sustained release, which is called Ritalin SR, and extended release, which is called Ritalin LA. I'm assuming that stands for long acting. That is just a guess though. So the immediate release Ritalin um, will obviously act immediately, just kind of like with Adderall, depends on what you've eaten, but it will, should kick in within like 15 minutes. And then it lasts for about three to four hours. There are three doses of immediate release Ritalin and they are five, 10 and 20 milligrams. There's also a sustained release Ritalin. This kicks in within about an hour and it lasts four to eight hours. And there is only one dose for the sustained release and that would be 20 milligrams. And then finally the extended release also kicks in within, within about an hour and it could last up to 10 hours. They have more doses though, from, ranging from 10 to 60 milligrams. I was confused when I looked this up. I'm like, okay, so what really is the difference between Ritalin SR and Ritalin LA? Uh, it literally, it's just SR is intermediate acting and LA is long acting. That's the only difference. They kick in about the same amount of time, and uh, but the Ritalin SR lasts less time than the extended release. I believe though that SR, since it's sustained, it says sustained, it is more of a plateau type of effectiveness, whereas extended release has more of a peak and then it goes downhill. So let's see the mechanism of action for Ritalin. It's going to inhibit the reuptake of norepinephrine and dopamine by blocking their transporters. So normally, during reuptake, um, there are these transporters that are going to come in and take the neurotransmitters back if they're not being taken up by the postsynaptic neuron. Um, but Ritalin is going to block those transporters. So I another little schematic here. We have norepinephrine is the N, obviously, and then the dopamine is going to be the D. And this is the cleft club, referring to the synaptic cleft. So norepinephrine and dopamine are going to the cleft club. Norep norepinephrine is psyched because it's going to be lit. Dopamine is also hyped. And here comes the transporter. Hey, I'm here to pick these guys up. And guess what? Not a chance, ombre, back of the line. So Ritalin is going to prevent those transporters from picking them up and taking them away from the postsynaptic neuron, giving them a better chance to be taken up by that postsynaptic neuron and used by the brain. Effects on the body. Uh, you're going to have improved attention span and concentration. This also um, specifically is controlling for fidgeting. Um, do not quote me on this. I'm not 100% sure. I should have looked this up before, but I'm pretty sure Ritalin is taken uh, more frequently by people that have uh, hyperactive type or are more hyperactive than others. Uh, there are a lot of bad side effects while while Adderall and Vyvanse also had bad side effects I found a lot more for Ritalin so I included a lot of them so things like upset stomach uh, rapid breathing your body temperature and your blood pressure and your heart rate are all going to go up um, you have circulation issues stuff like that so make sure you're aware of those things if you're going to talk to your doctor about taking Ritalin the other methylphenidate drug is going to be Concerta they're just like Ritalin, it's methylphenidate, same exact chemical structure. However, Concerta only has extended release. It's going to kick in within an hour, just like the others. Um, it can last up to 12 hours. Everything I found online though, though, all the forums, people said it usually lasts about six and then a max of 10. Uh, it does remain in your system for about 12 hours though. Um, and the doses are kind of weird for Concerta, whereas like the other medications like Adderall, Vyvanse, Ritalin, they were more even round numbers, like not even, but like 5, 10, 15, 20, stuff like that. These are kind of weird, 18, 27, 54. So doctors were finding that these Concerta, they used to be on the uh, more round number doses, but they were finding that the doses were not really uh, comparable to that of 
other ADHD medications. So they just adjusted them to have them be more comparable to like Adderall, Vyvanse, those kinds of doses. And then also it has the same mechanism of action as Ritalin and has the same effects on the body, same risks. So if you're interested in taking Concerta and you miss the Ritalin part, rewind it a little bit. It's right before Concerta and then you can see the mechanism, mechanism of action and all that good stuff. So I was confused when I was researching this, like what's the difference then between Ritalin and Concerta? And the answer is nothing. Now it is. Uh, Concerta and Ritalin used to be different because Ritalin used to only have immediate acting um, immediate release type of medicine. But now, like you know before, Ritalin also has intermediate and extended release. So now really the only difference is that Concerta doesn't have intermediate or immediate like Ritalin does. Um, the, all, the other difference that may be between, there may be between Concerta and Ritalin are insurance companies might cover each drug differently. Maybe they cover Concerta, but not Ritalin, or maybe there's like a higher copay on them. I don't know. I do not understand the rhyme or reason for insurance companies doing what they do. That's just how, uh, just how they work because, uh, America. So yeah. The last stimulant we're going to talk about today is Focalin or the, uh, generic name or the chemical sh chemical structure name is going to be dexmethylphenidate and here is the structure here. Focalin comes in two varieties. We have the immediate release and that's just referred to as plano focalin, kind of like with Ritalin, the immediate release is just called Ritalin and extended release, which is focalin XR. The immediate release is going to kick in within 20 minutes and it lasts about four hours. And there are only three doses for the immediate release. And then extended release is going to kick in within an hour and it can last up to 12 hours. But just like the previous ones, just because it says it lasts up to 12 hours doesn't mean it usually does. Like for me, for example, with Adderall, it says up to 12 hours, but it usually only lasts about five or six, the extended. Um, so this also comes in lots of doses ranging from five to 40 going in five milligram increments. And it's going to block the reuptake of dopamine and norepinephrine. That is the mechanism of action. So what's the difference between methylphenidate and dexmethylphenidate? Or in other words, what's the difference between Ritalin and Concerta and Focalin? So even though Focalin has a similar chemical structure to Ritalin and Concerta, it actually acts more similarly to amphetamine or Adderall. Um, however, even though it has like the same type of um, mechanism as Adderall and it acts about the same as Adderall, it is much milder than Adderall. So if, if you're sensitive to Adderall, then Focalin might be a good uh, route to go if if you like the way Adderall works, but it makes you maybe a little too anxious or um, you're experiencing a lot of the negative side effects, maybe try Focalin because it has uh, milder effects on your brain. So that is all we have today about stimulants. Um, check back for the video about non-stimulants. I hope to maybe record it in the next few days. Just a sneak preview, here are the non-stimulants we're gonna be talking about that people commonly take for ADHD. Uh, Stratera, Capve, Intuniv, and Wellbutrin. And I have a message from my four-year-old son. I would really appreciate a like, a subscription, and if you have any questions, please leave them in the, in the uh, comments below. And uh, have a great day. See you guys later.